computer I'll ever build for YouTube in this room. This, unless I guess maybe COVID-19 just takes over the whole world. Ugh, hate to think about that, but uh, I I'm moving out of my house. I'm moving on in into a new office. It's in a basement full of concrete with concrete uh, above me, which will be really nice for like soundproofing because every five minutes a freaking car drives by with a fart can on it or some diesel truck. Like here, this is a, a take a go. Oh, good. A really loud car is, is driving by. Still is fucking loud exhaust driving by. So I always got some fart can going by. I gotta close all the windows in here. I usually put an air conditioner in here, which you can't have running while you're filming, so it gets really hot. So it's gonna be nice. I'm gonna move out of here and uh, get some of my house back, have a, a nice office. And it's kind of sad because I'm in here boiling, making the last computer you know video I'll ever make in here, but uh, it's happening. So what is this computer? What is this case? What is going on here? Well, it has a, it has a Blu-ray burner because that's important these days. <laughs> Basically, uh, a few weeks ago, I made a video on a computer that a client of mine had. It was a computer that was very expensive when it was built 10 or 11 years ago. That my friend, uh, I guess a new client or a friend now, a computer friend, Dan, has the you know idea that you should spend as much money as possible on your computer so that you don't have to ever upgrade it and it will last a long time. It kind of worked for him last time, but I made this video on his uh, four or five thousand dollar computer from ten years ago, and how thinking like that, like I'm gonna buy the most expensive computer so I won't have to upgrade, doesn't really work. It's not really the best way to think about it because his computer was pretty worse for wear, although it did make it ten years and was still sort of gaming AAA titles. Uh, near the end there, so bravo to him. But uh, he brought the computer to me and wanted uh, a new computer built, which it is right here, but also wanted that other computer fixed and upgraded. I you know, replaced the thermal paste on it, put a six core Xeon in it. It was a i7-940. Uh, so that, you know, you can put a, a Xeon with six cores in it with a little bit of better IPC. I wound up doing that for him for like 20 bucks, upgraded some RAM, you know, blew up the system. Now it's working tickety-boo. We couldn't get his Titan X working. I tried baking it in another video. Uh, but uh, we put a GTX 970 in it and it's a secondary computer if he has a friend over that wants to play some video games or something like that. But here is the main event. The computer that Dan, although wanted me to buy all the parts and do this, you know, kind of me, me do all the work, wound up, you know, as a complete layman to computers, as a guy who brought me a computer that was thermal throttling to no end because of the bad thermal paste and, you know, some, some other things, thought only 8 gigs of RAM was supported on his motherboard, uh, did the research and wound up getting all the parts he needed. and. Heck, I made them a computer here and there were no mistakes, less the, the Blu-ray drive. I was like, dude, why did you order a Blu-ray drive? How much money? He's like, 
about a hundred bucks. I bought the best one on that I could find on Amazon. I'm like, are you burning Blu-rays very often? Well, no, but maybe I'll need to, but he needed an optical drive for some old games he has. So I could have given him uh, one of the 15 DVD drives I have lying around, but no, he bought one, so good for him. But uh, the other uh, point of interest would be this case. This is not something I would pick, this case. Cougar Panzer, this thing is as cougar as Courtney Cox, man. And, uh, I actually was like thinking how ugly it was uh, when he, you know, was asking about it and like I have a bunch of cases he could have used but he wanted to buy his own case, did his research and I don't even think they make this thing anymore but he found a new old stock of it, the Cougar Panzer Max and now that I've built in it and I have had it here I actually kind of like it and I kind of like the looks of it. It looks like a sports car has some faux carbon fiber it has little uh you know, hardware that's like kind of gold it's got you know pretty good airflow in it actually uh although for the money he spent on it and the money cougar would have wanted for it originally like this is an over 200 hundred dollar case there's some serious things lacking which we'll talk about uh here but let's go over the specs of what dan ended up getting and he spent about a four thousand dollars again here 10 years later but we did it smart Okay, 3900X, MSI Meg Ace, 32 gigs of RAM, got Trident Neo 3600 megahertz. We got uh, two fourth gen <laughs> PCIe uh, Corsair MP600 NVMe drives, uh, 500 for uh, Windows and uh, two terabyte for his games. So his games are gonna load mega fast. We got a nice Seasonic 850 watt power supply. I put my uh, Anartic uh, AIO in here. This is one of the best known the Arctic Freezer 2 for Ryzen. It's a 280 and it's like lucky that I had it because it's one of the bigger AIOs you could even fit in this case, which we'll talk about in just a second. And then uh, uh, we would have went with a 2080 Ti, but those are all $2,000, half the budget of this thing uh, right now to buy. So we wound up going with a uh, 2080 Super and he went with the Gaming X Trio. So he probably spent too much money on this, but uh, all said and done, specs on this thing end up in around $4,000 uh, Canadian. And I won't be doing any benchmarks or anything like that on this. I just wanted to show off the system and talk about the Cougar Panzer a little bit and talk about uh, how even if you're going to spend a lot of money, uh, it's maybe better to think the way we thought on this than going with the best gaming solution at the time. Because there's some upgradability here that uh, he wouldn't have with Intel counterparts. So we went with the 3900, not the 3950X 16 core, because for gaming, this isn't going to do any better for him. Uh, you know, to have 16 cores. You could go with the eight core, and I might have suggested that for him, but I think this was a nice middle ground, 12 cores. I don't think you should really be upgrading this CPU anytime soon, but because this is an X570 Meg Ace motherboard, it has a 38 megabyte BIOS, I noticed while I was updating the BIOS on this. So there should be future support for, uh, you know, Zen 3 processors. So theoretically in a year, you know, the you know, when AMD takes the performance crown for, you know, gaming CPUs, we'll be able to upgrade it if we want. Or in a couple of years, even better things come out or, uh, you know, the, you know, s s some better CPUs in this start getting, uh, you know, a little bit cheaper. We can upgrade this system easily. If we would have went with an, a 9900K, there is no better CPU you could put in that motherboard. If we would have went with a 10900K, we still wouldn't have the CPU because I've been waiting for mine for three weeks now, two and a half weeks now uh, on pre-order and it hasn't shown up. So, uh, you know, and then is that motherboard, you know, the uh, new Z490 motherboards, are those going to support better CPUs than the 10900K? Probably not. Maybe, but we don't know what's going on with anything, you know, upgraded 10 nanometer or whatever from Intel. I would certainly hope so, but I bet that only one generation will be supported on Z490. So going with that is just kind of silly. We have some upgradability this way. And uh, he put in two M.2s that are fourth gen like that. That's that's awesome. His games are gonna load like that. We put in a nice Arctic Freezer 2, which is one of the best uh, coolers you can use uh, for Ryzen right now. And uh, unfortunately, we can only go with the 280, uh, but I will be getting a 360 to test. I'm doing actually uh, soon on the channel, uh, 360, uh, uh, mill AIO shootout.
because I have like brand new ones from almost every manufacturer. I'm just waiting on Arctic to send me a 360 so that I can do an apples to apples comparison because apparently this is one of the best ones in my testing. That is kind of where it seems like it is, but uh, I haven't been able to test the bigger rat on it. So we'll do that later. So getting down to his choice of Blu-ray burner, I mean of, uh, of case, Cougar Panzer Max, and I couldn't talk him out of it. He wanted this case, and I've seen people build this case before, and it, it kind of seems like a last gen kind of thing. I don't even know if they make it anymore. He had a hard time tracking one down. But I was like trying to, you know, say, dude, I have a bunch of cases. You could come and pick from them. I have small cases and big cases. I've got like one of those uh, the MSI cases. This is a lot of MSI parts and it would really went nice with it. But I've got that big giant MSI case that I did the build in. You know, you could have had that or uh, I've got a Land Cool 2 uh, from uh, Lian Lee. But he wanted this case. He found it. He wanted all these parts. He went out and found them and he brought them in and everything works together. He didn't screw up a thing. So that goes to show he learned about computer hardware and maybe, you know, the next time he'll build the computer himself, which is cool. That's that's what I like to see with people. I like making money building computers for people, but it's nicer to see, you know, the community get bigger and people actually, you know, get into the, the PC components. And he understood by the end what you know, where all these components fit together and was asking a lot of, you know, interesting questions about, you know, the, the parts he was choosing and stuff like that. So pretty cool stuff. But as far as the Cougar Panzer Max, I have some things to say about it. And that's really where it's a little bit of a review of the Cougar Panzer Max, even though it's completely irrelevant at this point. Um, number one, there's usually a uh, little power supply shroud, a plastic thing that would go over things. Make, so you can't see the, the um, wires coming out of the power supply. But you can't use that with any sort of AIO being mounted in the front. And you say, well, why don't you mount the AIO at the top? There isn't enough room to mount any AIO up here without it getting in the way of your VRMs and stuff like that. It's just not possible. So you have to mount, at best, a 280 mil rad in the front. And if you wanted to go bigger than that, it looks, yeah, you could remove, hold on, it's, no, you could remove the, uh, the optical drive base so that you could get a little bit bigger rad in here, but you're really looking at only room for one rad in this case. So, and he was looking to, custom water cool his computer at one point. And I didn't really realize how bad the support was in this thing for custom water cooling, but it would be a chore to figure out components that would fit in here. Uh, you know, because ideally with, uh, you know, this, with buying a giant uh, MSI uh, Gaming X Trio 2080 Super here, with the giant heatsink on it, you'd want to probably mount it vertically with a water block, which you cannot in this case, but you'd want, uh, you know, two rads for that, you know, for the CPU and one for the GPU if you were going to custom water cool this particular computer, but there'd be no way to get a rad for each of the things. So it would be, I think, a compromise to put custom water cooling, which the whole idea behind custom water cooling is to get better cooling performance. I don't think you could do any better than what's in here right now. I did pretty good. I mounted some fans up here because you can actually, there's a lot of room around the edges here, which makes this case seem a lot bigger than it actually ends up being for like the amount of footage you have inside it to build in. There's a lot of room in the back for cable management and uh, for hard drives. But this, that's where the, you know, this is kind of an older case vibe, you know, coming from a lot of, there isn't a lot of, uh, you know, usage for uh, 2.5 inch hard drives in a really high end system anymore. Yeah, you know, one or two or maybe three, but I think there's like four or five different bays back there for them. And then there's two, only two bays for, uh, um, for three and a half inch drives. So it's kind of weird. And then lastly on the Cougar Max, Cougar Panzer Max, I really don't like that this panel is acrylic. Over $200 he paid for this case, and it's got an acrylic side panel, and it's already got all kinds of static, you know, and the, the static pulls over little hairs and dust, and it sticks to it, and it's the easiest ever to scratch. So I wish it had a glass side panel, but, you know, you can tell this is thought of probably three years ago, this case. So it's, you know, I guess you can't blame them too hard. But all in all, built, said and done. It's a pretty nice computer. And uh, I actually really like it. I put some red 
uh, cable extensions on there to make, you know, add the little red. There's accents of red on the video card. I put the MSI logo over here, you know, and uh, then we made the lights white in it. I just put one LED strip here. The fans are all, you know, black fans. They don't have any RGB in them. And I think that makes this thing like really tasteful. And it looks like a high end piece of machinery, like a Lamborghini or a, a McLaren or something like that with the carbon fiber and like the, you know, the nice intake, you know, it's got lots of intake and exhaust on here, pretty good airflow in this case. And uh, all in all, and for you on Twitter that was like, you mounted the power supply backwards, my whole idea here is that their air comes through the EIO and then, you know, the GPU has to deal with some warmer air, but it's got a fresh source of air. There's even a vent on the bottom here uh, so it can pull some air from there. And then uh, the power supply will be used as an exhaust in this like kind of half chamber here to help get some of the, uh, the heat out of the bottom of the case because there's two, one, two, three fans exhausting for the CPU area, but not as much for the GPU area. So I thought that that was, uh, you know, a good idea to switch the power supply over. Sometimes it just works better that way. But uh, as far as temperatures go in this case, we're at 76 degrees on the GPU. And that's pretty good considering the uh, ambient temperature in here has got to be 30 degrees. It is freaking boiling in here. And the CPU is at less than 50 degrees. It's overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz on the 3900X at 1.375 volts. And that cooler easily keeps at around 80 degrees in this 30 degree weather. Uh, you know, Celsius uh, uh, on a Cinebench load, so it's doing just fine there. Got the RAM overclocked to 3600 megahertz on the XMP profile, and it's just a freaking fast ass system. It's crazy fast. So, this is the last computer I'm building in my office, and I think I've talked a little bit too far on it, but uh, I've got to thank Dan for letting me build it for him. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to build a computer that, you know, I wasn't in control of. Uh, but at the same time, you know, the parts he picked all worked together and once I got building in it, you know, it really looked, it looks good. It turned out well, I think, and, uh, I think Dan's going to be really, really happy. So I will see you guys in another video. What do you think of this build? What do you think of the Cougar Panzer Max? What do you think of Blu-ray burners? Yeah. <laughs> Any questions about the build? Comments below, you know, content's gonna be sparse until June 15th, the midway through June, uh, until I get set up in my new office, so please bear with me. But uh, I love all you guys. And here's a computer build, I'm running Port Royal, and oh my God, I gotta go change my shirt. I've sweated through it. It is 32 degrees in here. I'll see you guys later.